empower me. Wow. Wisdom over wounds. January 2nd. Will you go out without knowing? He went out not knowing where he was going. Hebrews 11 verse 8. Have you ever gone out in this way? If so, there is no logical answer possible when anyone asks you what you are doing. One of the most difficult questions to answer in Christian work is, what do you expect to do? You don't know what you are going to do. The only thing you know is that God knows what he is doing. Continually examine your attitude towards God to see if you are willing to go out in every area of your life trusting in God entirely. It is this attitude that keeps you in constant wonder because you don't know what God is going to do next. Each morning as you wake, there is a new opportunity to go out, building your confidence in God. Do not worry about your life nor about the body. That's found in Luke chapter 12, verse 22. In other words, don't worry about the things that concerned you before you did go out. Have you been asking God what he is going to do? He will never tell you. God does not tell you what he is do going to do. He reveals to you who he is. Do you believe in a miracle working God? And will you go out in complete surrender to him until you are not surprised one iota by anything he does? Believe God is always the God you know him to be. When you are nearest to him, then think how unnecessary and disrespectful worry is let the attitude of your life be a continual willingness to go out in dependence upon God and your life will have a sacred and inexpressible charm about it that is very satisfying to Jesus you must learn to go out through your convictions creeds or experiences until you come to the point in your faith where there is nothing between yourself and God. Wow, what a simple word. Lord, empower me. My faith. Empower my faith where there is nothing between me and God. Father, I want to be knowing and willing to go out wherever you send me. The message today is, will you go out without knowing? That's a question found in Hebrews chapter 11 and 8. It says, he went out not knowing where he was going. That scripture is referring to Abraham. Hebrews 11 and 8 says, By faith, Abraham, when he was called, obeyed by going out to a place which he was to receive for an inheritance. And he went out not knowing where he was going. Hebrews 11. That's the NASB version. But it says that he was going to receive his inheritance by faith. Abraham simply obeyed. There are certain differences in the way that God deals with his servants in 
different dispensations or ages, and the permanently indwelling Holy Spirit is one unique difference in this church age. However, faith is the constant that unites all believers. I'm going to say that again. Faith is the constant thing that unites all believers. The imputed means it's been put upon us. Righteousness of Christ is received only by faith. By believing the word of God, by trusting the Lord to carry out his promises and by obeying his word. Abraham was living in a pagan society which had strayed far from God who had saved them through the flood waters of judgment due to Noah's faith in God. But Abraham's first encounter with the Lord was when God called him out of the Gentile city of earth, you are, to a place that he was to receive an inheritance. But Abraham went out not knowing where he was going. We are told in Hebrews that he obeyed God by faith. And we are told in Romans, Abraham believed God and it was credited to him as righteousness. The glory of salvation is that it is all by God's grace through faith. Forgiveness is by God's grace through faith. And righteousness is imputed to all who believe what God has promised by faith faith. Righteousness is credited by grace through faith in God's anointed Savior. And by faith, we are to continue living lives obeying God's word. Abraham looked forward to the coming Savior by faith. We look back to the crucified Savior and it is all by faith. Faith is trusting God's word. Faith is believing God's promises to be true. Faith is obeying the word of the Lord just as Abraham obeyed when he was called to leave his homeland to gain an inheritance. Even though he had no clue where he was going. Like Abraham, we were saved by faith. Called out of the world. Credited with God's righteousness. Promised an inheritance. And we are traveling along the path of life towards the goal of our calling. We are now to live our life by faith, listening to his voice, trusting his word, obeying his instructions, believing his promises to be quite unquestionably true. Faith is confidence in what we hope for, and assurance about what we do not see. This is what was commended in Abraham, and this is what will be commended in all who live by faith. Father, thank you for the example of Abraham who lived his life by faith. Father, I pray that as my faith is tested, through the circumstances of life, that in the end I will come forth as gold, but not just as gold, but after I'm tried in the fire, I shall come out as pure gold. In your son Jesus' name, I pray. Father, I thank you right now that by 
We are trusting in your divine word and your divine calling. Father, we thank you that we have faith enough to go out to receive what you have ordained for us. Father, I thank you right now for my friends, my family, my loved ones, my co-workers, my acquaintances on this line right now. That they are developing their faith to a level to where when you say go to the right, they'll go. When you say go to the left, you'll go. When you say sit for a while, they'll sit and trust that you're taking care of everything. Father, we thank you for taking care of jobs right now. Father, we thank you for taking care of transportation right now. Father, we thank you for taking care of healing of the bodies right now. Father, I thank you for taking care of mental issues right now. Father, I thank you for taking care of hunger right now. You know where the food is. You know where the answers are. You know where the jobs are. You know where the cars are. You know where everything is that we need. And so often the enemy makes us feel that you are taking things from us and that he has all the goodies and the glamour out in the world and everybody's looking at all of the money and the things that it seems like the world is being blessed with and it seems like the people of God are not. But the word of God said God knows how to give his children good gifts. The one thing I have began and continue to understand about God and the way he gives you his gifts and his inheritance is that he is going to find out who you are, what you are willing to do, what your sacrifice will be. Will you do what he tells you to do with your inheritance? If he calls you to feed the homeless and gives you lots of money, will you take it and squander it? Or will you go out? Because Jesus said the needy and the poor, we will always have with us. But he still tells us to not turn our back on them. If he gives you the best job, will you even share your knowledge and information with young people coming up behind you? Or will you covet and cover everything so many people have cars and cars and cars that they'll never use if God tells you to give that car to somebody are you willing to do so I know it happens so many people say that nobody gives you cars I have people give me cars just say I'm buying me another one and you can have this one I'm like what give me a car Pay my note off. When you have money and you have an abundance from God, God is judging you by your heart. The men of God in the Bible were wealthy men. Most of them. Abraham was wealthy. But when God told him to go out, he was getting ready to give him more of his inheritance. The land, the sheep, the cattle, the things that meant wealth in that time, in that age. So, Father, I thank you that so many people are upset because the enemy has gotten them deceived. They feel that believers shouldn't have any money, that we should be poor. That's not anywhere in the Bible that we should be poor financially. But he said, blessed are the poor in spirit. And what he was saying, those, that word poor stands for anybody that suffered any kind of loss. That's from the Beatitudes in Matthew. He says, anybody that has suffered any loss, blessed are the poor. That word converts over to the bereft, B-E-R-E-F-T, which means they suffered a loss of some sort. We usually use that word to the term bereavement, the bereft refers to somebody whose family member or loved one has died. So he's saying, blessed are the bereft, the poor, 
those who have suffered a loss of their job, suffered a loss of their family, suffered a loss of their friendship. It refers to anyone who suffered any kind of loss. God said, we are to prosper as well as be in health. He wasn't calling you to be poor and out on the streets to serve God. You need finances to serve God. Get that straight in your mind. The enemy is just clouding us all up with the stuff that the devil gives his people to sell drugs and kill innocent folk. We're looking at prostitution. Sell your body until you drop dead and contaminate many young women and men with your prostitution. Now, prostitution is not just the sexual prostitution. You can prostitute people in business. You can prostitute people over their land. You can prostitute so many ways. You can come in one way and take precious resources from individuals while you get paid a little change. God is saying, I'm watching what you're going to do with the inheritance that I have. The first step of faith is to obey. Step out on faith. Don't step out on ignorance. Step out on faith. Faith, there is a big difference. Presumption is you presuming God going to do something, and that's not what God told you to do. And then you have foolishness. Some people just run and give everything away. Just, I thought that that would please God. God didn't call you to be foolish. He said, have faith. Foolishness and presumption. God does not ordain that. Somebody that's hungry get $10 in their hand and won't go buy food for their child but feel that they should turn around and give that in an offering. What? God just gave that to you to buy your children some fruit. Some of these things go into foolishness. Don't misunderstand me. I believe in giving my offerings out of the abundance that God has blessed me with. And if God tells you to tithe your last like he did the widow's mite, and she gave the last that she had because all she had was a little meal and water, and she was going to make her and her son a cake, and they were going to lay down and die. And God sent the prophet there. God will respond to you if you do your last. He sent the prophet there and told her to bake me a cake. And she's looking at him like, I only have enough for me and my son. He said, bake me a cake anyway. Now, this is the faith side of giving your last, not the foolishness side of giving your last. And he, the prophet said, make me a cake anyway. Have a little bit of oil left in the barrel. And a little bit of meal, I believe it was. And without complaining, she made him a cake. And he blessed her barrels. And the word of God said during that time of drought, she never ran out. So God will give you an overflow, an abundance of what you need. When you give the correct way, when you give the way God instructs you to give, don't give out of deception. Give the way God instructs you to give, and then it will come with confirmation in your spirit. God is a wise God. God will tell you to do things that you may not necessarily understand. Like, why would I get up and leave my home in order to go somewhere I don't know? But God gave him instructions. Moving at that time, they were already like sheep herders out and about. They moved to another part of the country 
that was flowing in blessings. So, Father, I thank you today for all of my friends and family that's on this line, that you're trying to get a word to them about. Will you go out without knowing? Will you go out, in other words, walking in the faith of the Lord? So many times you can step out on faith and God will reward you. But you have to know the difference between faith and foolishness or presuming. I just presumed God was going to do that. Did God even tell you anything like that? So many other friends and people that I know, you're presuming all the time and you end up in trouble. Pride goes before destruction. And a haughty spirit before a fall. Most of it is out of pride. You get money and go and try to run with the Joneses. You go and buy everything that they have. God didn't bless you for that. But if you have extra and God says, go on out and buy you a nice something or other. You don't have to feel guilty because God has given you the okay. You've done what I've told you to do. Buy yourself something nice. Buy yourself something to make you happy. So, Father, I thank you right now. For your word is true. And forever settled in the heavens. Father, I thank you. For this word today that you gave me is called, Will You Go Out Without Knowing? That's the topic of the day. Hebrews 11 and 8 says, He went out not knowing where he was going. And that was the reference to Abraham in the Old Testament. So, Father, I thank you for this message today. Empower me. Wow. Wisdom over wounds. This is found on most podcast channels. Also playing simultaneously is one of my other podcasts called Drill Sergeant Series, Making Jewels. I refer to it as Nuggets of Gold for Fiery Trials. Lord, I thank you for wisdom for the coming season upon our lives. So again, Father, we thank you for those that are on a subscription channel. Click like and subscribe. Send me a happy face and an emoji or or a message, but please be respectful and most highly on my list is please be respectful to my husband Reginald so father I love you today I thank you for this simple word I thank you I'm willing to go as the man in the Old Testament said Lord I'll go Lord send me you said who will go he said Lord I'll go in me but he said I got some problems I'm not quite ready to just bounce out there he says I don't quite understand why I have been chosen I don't quite know what you want from me and then Isaiah says I am a man of unclean lips and I live amongst the people of unclean lips in other words he had a dirty mouth a foul mouth How can I go and speak on your behalf? And you see the Lord immediately does something to cure that. He dispatched an angel around the throne to pick up a coal off the altar of God. A coal of fire. He used tongues like you use when you're cooking food and picking up something hot. The angel used the tongue and picked up a coal and came and placed that coal on the tongue of Isaiah. And then he knew it burnt that sinful tongue out of his mouth. Those words, it corrected him with the Holy Ghost fire. That was a representation of the Holy Ghost fire fire will clean you and get you together. He said, Lord, now I'm ready. I'll go. I'll go. Send me wherever you want to send me. So, Father, today we say, I'll go. Send me wherever you want to send me. And we thank you 
Lord, for this grace upon our lives today. And your blessings that are free and flowing in our lives. So anyone on here that is depressed, downtrodden, give it to God. Let God have it. Let God bring you into your inheritance. Well, I'll say that on this show, just another nugget of gold for a fiery fire. God be with us. Go with us today. And remember, I love you. This is Sister Barbara. Bye-bye.